These are the questions from last class. Can a man wear silk clothes? According to Hadith 345 of Masnad Imam Ahmad, no, he cannot. And uh, an invest, investment scheme or insurance scheme <clears throat> about which you are doubtful whether it is halal or haram in interest money. According to Hadith 350 of Masnadi Imam Ahmad, we should not invest in any dubious matter or dubious investment scheme or dubious investment insurance. Today we will study from Mishkatul Masabe, Hadith number 195. Start. Auzubillahim Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Start. Sayyiduna Jabir radiallahu anha narrated that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, My words do not abrogate Allah's words, but Allah's words do abrogate mine. Also, also Allah's word sometimes, sometimes abrogate some other words of his. <clears throat> so it has two things. First thing, Allah's words do abrogate mine, which means that sometimes Prophet ﷺ may have said something, but after some time, after some months, maybe a Quranic ayah was revealed in which some other command was given to the Muslims. And then <clears throat> Allah words sometimes abrogate some other words. For example, Allah may have given a command in Holy Quran, but after some month, another Quranic ayah was revealed in which that command was changed. So this is the meaning of this hadith. No need to write any question. Miss Hood. Tija Muslim. Sayyid Ibn Umar narrated that Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said some of our hadith abrogate some others like the abrogation of the Quran some of it by others So sometime Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam may have said something may have given command about something maybe he gave permission about something but after some months in another command, that thing was made forbidden. Okay. For example, <clears throat> do you have any example regarding this? Yes or no? Anyone? There is one example, let me tell you. For example, the mutta marriage was allowed at some specific times in hadith. But after some time, <clears throat> that was made haram. So this is an example of this, that some time in hadith, Prophet ﷺ may have allowed something. But after some months, after some years, that thing was made <clears throat> haram forever. Next student, Um Muhammad. Sayyid Sayyiduna hmm. Abu Salaba al Hushan radiallahu anha narrated that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah has made some things obligatory, so do not let them go unattended. He has made some things unlawful, so do not violate them. 
He has set certain limits, so do not overstep them. And he has been silent about some things without forgetting them. So do not probe them. Mm. <clears throat> so few things are obligatory for you, which you have to do no matter what other situations like Salah, Saum, fasting, Zakah, these are necessary things, obligatory things for you. You cannot. Uh, you have no choice but to do them. Then there are some unlawful things. For example, alcohol, interest, money, adultery. These are unlawful things that we cannot do. And rest of the things, if you don't see any command in given in Quran, this means you can do it. No need to ask any question about these things. You can just do them because Allah did not stop you from these things. Next, Ms. Hoor. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidina Abdullah ibn. Amar Ziratana narrated that Allah's Messenger said, Transmit me from the even if it is one verse, and you may narrate from the Banu Israel, there being no haram in that, but harm. if anyone harm in that, but if anyone deliberately forts a lie against me then let him take his seat in hell so first thing Allah messenger وسلم, is commanding us to transmit everything that we have from him so whatever you study in the hadith class or whatever hadith you read from our groups try to share it with others First thing. Then second thing is for those who intentionally forge and lie about Prophet وسلم, their seat will be in hell. No need to write any question. Khatija Muslim. Um. Why, where should I start from? 199. Sayyidina Sumara Ibn Jandub, Radiya Anhu, and Sayyidina Al Mughira, Ibn Shuhaib, Radiya Allah Anhu, narrated that Allah's Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, He who narrates hadith from me, which he think is false, is among the liars. Mm, so. We have many fake hadiths on internet these days circulating on social media. So if you are not sure about any of these and you share it, then this means you are also among the liars. Um, Muhammad, next. Sayyiduna Muawiyah radiallahu anha narrated that Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when Allah intends good for a person, he gives him an understanding of religion. I only distribute, but Allah is the one who grants. So whenever Allah wants to do good with the person, Allah grants him the understanding of religion. This means Allah is also granting us the understanding. So Allah is intending something good for us. And no one is teaching anything. No one is sharing any knowledge. It is actually Allah who is giving you the knowledge. We have no nothing in it. Allah is giving you this knowledge directly. Miss Aishur. Sayyiduna Asumura Ibn Jundab Zillatananha and many concepts. Read this one, 201. 
Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anha narrated that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the people are minds like the minds of gold and silver. The best of them during the pre-Islamic days are the best of them in Islam if they possess an <clears throat> understanding. So some people were even good, even noble in the pre-Islamic period of Jahiliyyah. And if they possess the understanding of Islam, then this means they are the best in Islam as well. Okay, no need to write any question. Khatija, next. Sayyidina Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu narrated that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, it is not allowed to envy anyone besides two people. A man whom Allah has given wealth and enable him to use it on that which is right. And a man whom Allah has given wisdom and he applies it with prudence and teaches it to others. Mm, so we cannot invite anyone except two persons. We cannot invite anyone except except two persons. Who are these two? We cannot invite anyone. Except two persons. Who are these two persons? So in the answer you will write according to the Hadith 202. The wealthy person who spends in good According to Hadith 202 of Mishkat and Musabi, number one, a wealthy person who spends in good things or in right things. Number two, A wise person who make decisions with his wisdoms and teaches it to other. Number two, a wise person who applies his wisdom and teaches it to others. Repeat the question and the answer. We can't envy anyone except two persons. Who are these two? Um, according to Hadith 202 of Mishkatul Masabi, the first one is the wealthy person who spends in good things. And the second one is a wise person who applies his, widow, his wisdom and teaches it to others. Now read the next one. Sayyiduna Abu Huraira radiallahu anha narrated that Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when a person dies, reward for his deed are cut off from him, except three rewards for perpetual charity, knowledge from which benefit is derived by others, 
and righteous children who pray for him. So here we run the question. What three things benefit a person after his death? What three things benefit? What are the three things which benefit a person after his death? So in the answer you write according to on these two zero three of Mishkatul Masabe Perpetual Charity Number one Perpetual Charity Knowledge from which people benefit. Knowledge from which people benefit. Number three, righteous children who pray for him. Righteous children who pray for him. Okay. Khatija Muslim, repeat the question and the answer. What are the three things that the person after his death? Mm -hmm. uh, Sorry? Did not you write the answer? Ms. Ummi Ahmad. What three things benefit a person after his death? According to Hadith 203, Mishkatul Masabe, um, one is perpetual charity, and second is knowledge from which people benefit, and the third one is the righteous children who pray for him. Atina, can you hear us? Kyo Muhammad, you read this one. Miss Ummi Ahmad. Yes. Read this. Okay, now read this and this. 204. Do you hear me? Yes, I hear you, but I don't see the... Yeah, now I can see. Um, Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu anha narrated that Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, 
if anyone removes a difficulty of, dif of the difficulties of the world facing a believer, Allah will remove from him a difficulty of the difficulties on the day of resurrection. If anyone makes it easy for one who is straight in circumstances, then Allah will make it easy for him in this world and the next. If anyone conceals the fault of a Muslim, then Allah conceal him in the world and the next. And Allah is helpful, helpful to the slave as long as the slave is helpful to his brother. And if anyone pursues a path seeking thereby knowledge, then Allah makes easy for him a path to paradise. And never do a people assemble in a house of the houses of Allah, reciting Allah's book, teaching it to each other, without tranquility descending on them, mercy and enveloping them and the angels surrounding them. Allah remembers them among those who are with him. But if anyone is lack, I doing his deed, then his lineage will not advance him. So first thing, what if you remove someone difficulty? What if you remove someone's someone's difficulty? So according to Hadis. 204 of Mishkat al Musabi. Allah will remove your difficulty among the difficulties on the day of resurrection. I will repeat the answer according to Hadith 204. Allah will remove your difficulty among the difficulties on the day of resurrection. What if you make ease for someone? What if you make ease for someone? According to Hadith 204, Allah will make ease for you in this world and the next. Allah will make ease for you in this world and the next.
next thing very important we often see someone's sin we often see someone committing a sin committing a mistake now you should not tell it to anyone else what if you conceals someone fault or a sin or something like this what what if you conceal someone's fault so fault means fault it also means sin or a bad thing or a bad characteristic or maybe any simple mistake it include all these things What if you conceal someone's fault or someone's sin? Then Allah will conceal you in this world and the next life. So you also have some maybe sin or maybe a mistake or maybe some bad thing, bad characteristics. So Allah will conceal you in this world and the next life. For how long Allah will continue to help you? For how long Allah will continue? to help you. In the answer you will lie, right? Allah will continue to help you as long as you are helping others. In the answer you will write, Allah will continue to help you as long as you are helping others. What if you pursue a path seeking knowledge? What if you pursue a path seeking knowledge? What if you pursue a path seeking knowledge? Allah will make the path 
to paradise easy for you. Allah will make the path to paradise easy for you. Next thing we will not write question, just understand it, that what happens when people gather in any mosque or any religious place for teaching Allah book. Then tranquility from Allah descends upon them and mercy of Allah envelops them and angels surround them. Allah also remembered them with those who are with him. And the next thing, if anyone is slack in doing good thing, then his lineage will not advance him. Basically, his noble family bloodline will not help anything at all in the next life. Okay, read all these questions and tell me the answers. Start from number three. What if you remove someone difficulties? According to Hadith 204, Mishkatul Masabi, Allah will remove your difficulty among the difficulties on the day of resurrection. What if you make ease for someone? According to Hadith 204, Mishkatul Masabi, Allah will make ease for you in this world and the next. What if you conceal someone's fault? According to Hadith 204, Allah will conceal you in this world and the next life. For how long Allah will continue to help you? Allah will continue to help you as long as you are helping others. What if you pursue, pursue a path seeking knowledge? Allah will make the path to paradise easy for you. We will stop here and if anyone has any question, they can ask me. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Um, is he allowed for a lady that is in the period of Eid to attend an alqa that has been performed that has been um that has been performed in the masjid to attend an halqa? That is done in the masjid. Okay. If he's in the state of Hajj. Your question is, is it allowed for a woman, for a menstruating woman to attend a halqa in the masjid, in the mosque? No. Yes. During menstruation, you cannot go to the mosque. The answer is no. During menstruation, a woman can... Can she stay outside? Can she say can she stay outside the masjid? Yes, she can. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, another question was that I as a student of knowledge who is memorizing Quran when she's in a state of eye, how will she do with her memorization? She will not memorize Quran during menstruation. She can do just a scar during menstruation Muraja. askar mean like saying subhanallah saying the mother of muraja mean revision she cannot revise the quran during menstruation no okay okay Okay, see you all next time, inshallah, mas.